The current way we look at games as a whole stifle its growth, frankly. Therefore, here's why I feel that the current video game review must die. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, so you know. You know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to do this video a little bit different, okay? I know normally I like to give the diagnosis and the analysis and the prescription and all that stuff. I'm not doing that today. All right, this is more or less going to be like a mini op-ed or an audio or visual op-ed because there's something that I got to address today, all right? Now, here's what spawned this video before I get into the real beaten potatoes. Here's what spawned this video. So, at the time of this recording, the game Outer Worlds is sitting at an 86 or an 85, right? And that's around the same as Gears 5. Now, why am I comparing those two games? Because one is an ecosystem exclusive. The other one is a multi-plat, right? Um, meaning Gears 5 is, you know, part of the Xbox ecosystem uh, where Outer Worlds is, you know, you can play it on PlayStation 4 and the Switch and all that other fun stuff. Now, the reason why I made that comparison is because, think about it, nothing outside of a niche racer has been able to hit a 90 on Metacritic or above that's related to Xbox. And as we know, the developers of Outer Worlds is now an internal Xbox studio. It's just that they happen to be working on Outer Worlds before they were acquired by Microsoft. Okay, parent company of Xbox. Now. To your boy, y'all know how I rock. If you don't know, scores don't mean a thing to me in regards to quality. But even though that may be the case for me, you, and a lot of us, it does affect perception. We gotta be honest. And this perception, unfortunately, is because, again, because this game or the people that make this game are associated with Xbox and it's not a 90, it may not be worth my time. True or not, false or not, superficial or not, that is the perception. And perception is nine tenths of the law, as I always tell you. Now, I hope I'm wrong. But if that is the perception, it will undoubtedly affect the game's outcome as far as success is concerned. Now, wrong or not, right? Wrong or not, there is a bigger point to all of this that needs to be addressing. Hence why I made this video. I just find it sad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I find it sad and definitely worth addressing that in today's climate, everything is held to a score. In a time when game reviewers rushed your thoughts about games to be the first one out there or or and they do so while not trying to go too far off the consensus because of that atmosphere you don't get honest depictions and i can give you examples of that first and foremost um i was listening to podcasts unlocked you know where one of their reviews were talking about a current game that they were reviewing and they talked about how because the game is so wide and so expansive in order for them to do the review in a quote unquote reasonable time there's certain things they couldn't do they couldn't play at a certain difficulty or they couldn't do this or go and do that but that is the bulk of the game that's how the game was intended to be played it was intended to be played at an intense difficulty right you adjust that difficulty until it's intense for you and it was intended for you to play all the nooks and crannies to get a well-rounded experience but you're not willing to do that so you can put your review out there first and so you can have enough time to observe you know what i'm saying whatever what was going on around the shop get a get a pulse of what's going on so you're not too far off the reservation come on and secondly a more well-documented and more well-known instance of this is 
how people reviewed Destiny 1 opposed to Destiny 2. Now, we all know when Destiny 1 came out, it got hammered. People were saying the experience was stupid, it didn't make any sense, it was pointless and all this other stuff. But Destiny 1 became one of the most critically acclaimed games from gamers abroad. All right? So, and, that, and Destiny 1 was like that because a lot of people didn't take the time to understand what was in their hands. They were judging this game off of a litmus. That's like judging how well a steak tastes based off of what your, what your thoughts are on desserts. You know what I'm saying? They don't put the right focus and put everything in the right perspective when they're looking at these games. So you fast forward to Destiny 2, all right? You've already passed Destiny 1 and how foolish you looked in clobbering Destiny 1. You gave, they gave it 60s. It was in the 60s when that game came out. Low 60s at that for the most part, right? So you fast forward to Destiny 2 and everybody's rushing to give that game great scores. They give it great, they give it 80s, right? <laughs> they, they're loving the game. With that being said, the general consensus from the gamer again is that Destiny 2 at launch was a very bad game. More so than Destiny 1. You had people dropping off the game at astronomical rates, nothing that you've ever seen in Destiny 1 because of the nature of the game. But again, because these reviewers want to be quick and they don't want to go too far off the reservations. They just simply said, we don't want to look bad again, regardless of what our true opinions are. We're, you know, we, we're not worried about integrity. We're worried about perception, like I said earlier. So therefore, we look bad before, we're gonna say some nice things this time because it has a great fan base and we'll leave it at that. And they look like dumbasses again. So when you put those two examples together, it makes you understand how much trouble the current state of the game reviews are. Now, I'm gonna let you know this. As a gamer for 30 plus years, yes, a lot longer than a lot of you have been on this planet. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Gaming was supposed to be a place where different ideas flourished. You had your RPG gamers, your action gamers, you know, now they call them the Metroidvania game. You had all types of games, the tabletop gamers. Even though something wasn't within, may, may, may or may have not been within my particular lane, I still respected it because I liked the fact that it was different. People were flourishing it within their own hub and it, it might spawn something that might be universally beneficial to all the other hubs of gaming, right? That's how, Diversity of thought works to the best for all of us, okay? But again, it wasn't supposed to be like this. It's supposed to be a place, again, where different ideas flourish. It was supposed to be a place where the different idea holders went to their respective hubs and again, spoke their truths. They reviewed it, you know, the tabletop gamers reviewed their games a certain way, the RPG gamers reviewed their games a certain way, the sports gamers and so on and so on. And as a gamer within this community, you found the hub that best fit you and you relied on that source while respecting the others. Because again, they could potentially spawn something that is universally beneficial to everybody. For instance, when they were still around, I went to GMR Magazine for my reviews. Around that same time, you may have went to GameSpot and etc. And if a game was good enough and had enough broad appeal, it got enough support from each of the individual hubs where it flourished and was universally applauded. That's how it worked and it worked for the best of all gamers because we got the best and the most unique experiences with the technology that we had at the time, okay? Now, admittedly, the technology may have grown exponentially, but the flourishing and the, the diversity of games have it, all right? And, and, and it has it before reason. Now it seems like the culture is trying to force that universal appraise. And as a result, we have these fake aggregate of scores, Metacritic, that are supposed to average out the thoughts 
from these individual quote unquote hubs that I've mentioned prior. Problem is that the current hubs all think the same. There's no individuality. Again, everybody is just coming out in the same hive mind state of mind. Too hive minded. As a result of that, everybody digesting the food from these hives acts like they came off the same conveyor belt just with modern aesthetics. And I get it. This isn't just a problem that started in gaming. The social root of the problem is society altogether. And in this video, I'm not attempting to save the world, but at least we can begin to hold the gaming's downward project trajectory in the community. There needs not to be an overwhelming consensus on everything. That's not how it was supposed to work. Diversity of thought, likes and dislikes need to be innovative. This is technology. And because it's technology, diversity of thought, separation of who likes what and who dislikes what is more paramount than anywhere else. So if, if I can opine, my friends, my gaming community, let's, let's do something different. Let's do something different for the betterment of our community. Let's finally start using the internet to project smart ideas. <laughs> Not as a channel or a place for us to all just get together and follow the upset folksy idiot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Please, not in gaming, at the very least. And with that said, with that food for thought, that's it from your boy MM2K. I think I, I, I hope, and I do think, but I, I hope that essentially I gave you guys something to ponder on and, and hopefully we can stop again this downward trajectory because I love gaming. I've been doing it for again 30 plus years, longer than a lot of you been on this planet. And I've seen it reach a high, a peak, and then I've seen it start to recently to to dr dramatically decline in recent years, and it's a shame. Um so if we can keep the technology up but yet keep the the the, the separation of ideas and and individuality to help spawn innovation. It will be beneficial to all of us, trust me. So I hope y'all like what I had to say, but who cares what I think? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, if you do like what I have to say, catch me on the corner of every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show with your peoples, Snow Bunny, Neethals, Dirk Griggity is called Scram Punks. Check us out on Dirk Griggity's channel every Wednesday night. All right. And check out my brother in the broadband bullies. We are doing the damn thing. Check out the links below to follow us for the gear and for the discord and everything. You know what I'm saying? Check out the best damn podcast as well. Your boy is on the panel. And last but not least, check me out on the Heart and Our dig Digital Culture, twitch.tv forward slash Mighty Most 2000 or hndc.live. And with that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace. <laughs>